Hello everyone, I'm the Lumble Humberjack, and today we're playing Minecraft, but not just any Minecraft. It's a redstone world! We're gonna be looking at all of the secrets of redstone, and this is the introductory video. So I'm gonna put on my professor hat, the guise of Dr. Lumble H. Jack, and we are going to explore redstone secrets. Now, we're gonna be starting at the very basics, you know, things like what is redstone and redstone dust? Well, it's this block right here. You can put it down in lines, you can make connectors out of it, you can make little spots of it, and you can power it. And the fun part about redstone is it powers other blocks that are mechanical or aesthetic, and you can do lots of really cool things with them. Hopefully, we're gonna learn some of those things. So, the first thing you need to know about redstone is it powers stuff. It's either on, or it's off. So this redstone line currently doesn't have any power to it, and this one does. But in addition to being unpowered or powered, there's a number attached to this line. Right now, the number attached to this one is 15. The number attached to this piece of redstone is 15, and the number attached to this one is 14. The number attached to this one is 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And finally, zero. And so you notice, well, this one is at zero and this block is not lit up. So we see, ah, yes, redstone can power things 15 blocks away. And it decays over time. If this has a signal strength of 15, it goes down by one for each space until you have a signal strength of zero. So this is the block that is not lit up. And that's the first thing you need to know. But let's say you want to send a signal strength farther than 15 blocks. Well, you're either going to need to re-strengthen it part of the way there using a repeater or something like that, or you're going to need to maintain the signal strength long enough to get there using something like a comparator. So you see the repeater is going to increase the signal strength back to 15 after that block. And so this redstone line is brighter than this one because this one has more signal strength. The comparator just maintained the incoming signal strength and pushed the same signal strength out. But that let us get one block extra. But extending things this way comes at a cost. Minecraft computes things over a period of time called a tick, or a game tick. And redstone ticks are exactly two game ticks, or 0.1 seconds. And if you see, adding a repeater, yeah, those don't light up at the same time, and they don't deactivate at the same time. So using repeaters and other such redstone mechanisms adds a delay. Repeaters specifically add a delay of one to four ticks, depending on how you set them. Right now it's set to a delay of one, but if you right click it, it goes to two, three, and four. And so with this knowledge, you know, ah, if I send a signal into a repeater, it's going to delay that signal by some amount of time. Now, to power a redstone, you've got a couple of different options. We've already looked at levers, and there's also buttons and pressure plates that we'll talk about later. But one that we want to look at is the redstone torch. When you put down a redstone torch, it sends power to all of the adjacent blocks, and you can see that one lights up. But there is an exception. If you put a redstone torch on a contraption or a mechanism, uh, it's not going to power that block. So that's something that you have to work around. Similarly to redstone torches, blocks of redstone also provide power to adjacent blocks. And uh, these two are very useful, so you're going to want to get comfortable with them. Now, something else cool about redstone torches is that if they're attached to an opaque block, we call this type of block opaque because you can't see through it, something like glass would be transparent. And if you provide power to an opaque block, it'll turn off the redstone torch. But not always. Now, we're going to talk about observers in a minute, but all you need to know right now is that if they observe something change in front of them, they send a very short pulse behind them. So if I put this white concrete down, we see that it powers the redstone lamp. Now, if I take it away, it powers the redstone lamp, but the redstone torch isn't changing. And that's because the pulse emitted by the observer is too short. If you want to change the state of a redstone torch, whatever pulse you send has to be longer than 1.5 ticks. 
Now, on the topic of powering blocks, you might start to see some weird things happen. If we throw power to this lever, it powers the block below it and powers this redstone, which powers this block, which powers these two blocks, but not these two blocks. So uh, what's going on here? Well, let's take a look. So we've got three different situations. In this situation, we're powering a repeater or a, a power transferring mechanism and it's going to put that power in this opaque block, and we call this strongly powered. We've got a few different types of power here, so buckle up. A strongly powered block is going to be able to power redstone dust that it's attached to, as well as other mechanisms. Now, if we swap out that repeater for a piece of redstone dust, we see something that we call weakly powered. So now we're still powering this opaque block, and this opaque block is still powering the mechanism attached to it, but it's not powering the redstone dust behind it. And that's what we call weakly powered. And lastly, something to keep in mind is that opaque blocks can never directly power another opaque block. There must be dust in between them. So since we're weakly powering this block right here, it's going to provide power to the block beside it, but we're not actually powering up this block. We're just activating it. We're activating it, and what it happens to do is it gets bright, but we're not actually powering it, so we don't see any power coming out here, and we don't see any power coming out here. So there is a bit of a lexicographical difference between powering and activating that it's going to be useful to keep in mind. But let's move on. Aside from opaque blocks, we've got transparent blocks like glass. And the thing you need to know about these is, well, you can never power them. They can't be powered and they can't transfer power. So that's something that we can make use of. If we look at this setup, when I power this lever, it's going to send power along this redstone over to our lamp here. But what we're going to notice is that the opaque block cuts the redstone line, and we call this cutting the redstone line. And that is something that we can make use of in contraptions. On the other hand, if we try this same setup with a transparent block, it doesn't cut the redstone line. The redstone slips right by that corner there and keeps on going, and that's something that we can make use of. So if you put transparent blocks down, you can run a line of redstone vertically up them to power something at the top. Similarly, slabs count as transparent blocks, and so you can make the same sort of tower. And lastly, remember that you can power opaque blocks, but not transparent blocks. So if you want to power your contraptions, keep in mind what type of block you're using. All right, that's it for the easy stuff. Now we get to talk about comparators. So the basics of comparators. What does a comparator do? Well, it maintains signal strength if there's nothing else attached to it. Whatever signal strength comes in the back, it sends that signal strength out the front. But it's all in the name, right? A comparator. So this item is going to compare redstone strengths. So we see here now we're powering the back of this comparator, but nothing's happening. And if we come over here to this one and power it, Oh, we see now something is happening. So what's the difference? Well, the redstone signal coming into the comparator here is 14, and the redstone signal coming in from the side is 15. Since the redstone signal from the side is bigger than the redstone signal coming in from the back, it's not going to transfer power to the front. That's how a comparator works. Uh, on the other side, We've got a signal strength of 15 going in the back, a signal strength of 14 going in the side, so it is going to pass on the signal strength. So one of the base functions of a comparator is to compare signal strengths that are coming in, and that will tell it whether or not to activate the lines going out. Now, there is another function of comparators that is a little harder to understand, but it's not too bad. So we've got a lever here, some redstone dust. We've got a redstone signal of 14 going in from this side, a redstone signal of 13 going in from this side. And once we power this, we've got a redstone signal of 15 going in from the back. Now, you'll notice 
that this little knob on top is lit up, that's because we have it in subtraction mode. So we've got a uh, size of 15 going in the back and a 14 from one side, a 13 from the other side. And we see, oh, well, only one piece of redstone dust is lit up and it's got a signal strength of one. Otherwise, this block would be lit up. So what does subtraction mode do? Well, it takes the greater of the two redstone signals coming in from the side, in, the, in case this one, uh, the signal strength of 14, and it subtracts it from the signal strength coming in the back. So we've got 15 minus 14 is one. If I break this, we see, oh, okay, now the signal strength going into the side is 13, so it's gonna give us a signal strength of two on the other side. So that's what subtraction mode is going to do for comparators. Now they do a lot of other stuff, like counting the number of items inside of other items and giving a signal strength based on that, but I think we're gonna dedicate a whole video to that at some point, so uh, keep a lookout for that. All right, well, the next thing that we wanna look at is pistons. They push things. When you power a piston, it extends, and when you unpower it, it retracts. It's worth noting that it takes 1.5 ticks to extend a piston. That'll be helpful in just a moment. Another helpful thing to keep in mind is that you have to be careful about how you power a piston. If you power it from the back, it'll extend, or from one of the sides, but if you try to place a redstone torch in front of it, nothing will happen. This is another one of those exceptions to the redstone torch powering rule. It can't power pistons from the front, otherwise it would get bonked. Another type of piston is the sticky piston. It will extend, and it will retract. And so you see it has this little bit of glue on the front or slime, and as long as you put something in front of it, it'll push that, and it will pull it back. So we couldn't put a redstone torch in front of a piston and make it work, but if we just power a block in front of it, it should still work. And we see, ah, yes, it does. Right, so you power the block, and it extends. And when it becomes unpowered, because the lever broke, it retracts. But more interestingly, if you power the piston directly, all of a sudden the sticky piston isn't quite as sticky. Remember what I said about the time it takes a piston to extend? Well, if you send a signal length less than 1.5 ticks to a piston, it's going to do something weird like this, where it extends and then immediately retracts, but leaves the block that it was holding behind, or vice versa. It'll extend, grab the block, and immediately retract. And that is definitely something that we can make use of in cool machines. Another thing you might notice with pistons is that, well, they don't always work. If you try to push too many things, nothing is going to happen. The solution for this is try to push fewer things. And hopefully you'll find out, ah yes, we can push things as long as there are only 12 blocks. So the piston push limit is 12, and that is definitely something that we're gonna have to remember. Another fun thing that we can think about is weird situations with pistons. So let's recap. We've got a powered opaque block that has turned off this redstone torch. When we flip this switch, that redstone torch is going to come on and it's going to power this opaque block, which is going to power our piston. And there we go. We can see, yes, that works exactly as we think it should. Now, if we were to instead power a, a transparent block, we would expect nothing to happen. Because you're not supposed to be able to power transparent blocks, but this still seems to work. Well, what if we just got rid of that block altogether? Certainly this won't work in a really weird way. So this phenomenon is a really interesting idea called quasi-connectivity. This redstone torch is powering this piston as if there were an opaque block above it, because that's just how it works. That uh, used to be considered a bug, but it isn't. This is, this is redstone working as intended, apparently. And you can do some really cool stuff with this. But that, too, is beyond the scope of this introductory video. Now, as I put this video together, I realized something. There is one secret that I didn't even know. 
this was all a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. The wild world of redstone is vast, and there is so much to learn. We've barely scratched the surface of the basics in this 15-minute video, and, well, there's a lot more to do. So if there's anything in particular that you want to see, anything that you want me to go over, anything that we can learn together, please leave a comment and let me know. Uh, I promise I'll read it, and I might even respond to it. I'm, I'm probably going to respond to it. So... Yeah, uh, let me know what you want to go over because there is so much to go over and I really want to learn uh, everything that I can about this magical toy inside of Minecraft. So uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you had a good time. Please leave a like, uh, hit subscribe if you're feeling like it. And, and hey, leave a comment. Did I do anything wrong? Did I get something wrong? Did I do anything right? What do you want to see in the next Redstone Secrets video? I've got so many plans from flying machines to all sorts of things. But let me know what you want to see. Because after all, this is about you. Bye!